Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer, and this is Superhouse. If you have two of your devices that you want to convert to running Tasmoda, the simplest and the safest way to do it is an over the air update using two year convert. This has the really big advantage that you don't need to open the case. You don't need to make any electrical connections other than plugging in power. That means it's safe, so you're not going to electrocute yourself or do any damage. There's no need to get out a soldering iron. However, to use this method, three things have to be true. The first is that the module must use an Espressive chipset. Early two-year modules were based on the Espressive ESP8266 and ESP8285, but more recently they've been switching to Realtek and other types of microcontroller as well, so it's not always obvious what you're getting. And to make it even worse, some manufacturers have been changing from one type of module to the other without changing part numbers or packaging or anything else. You can buy two devices that look exactly the same. One of them will have an Espressive chip in it, one will have a Realtek chip in it. If you're not sure, you can open the case and have a look at the module. See if it matches one of the 8285 or 8266 modules shown in this picture. There is also a very obscure ESP32 based two-year module. I've never actually seen one of those in real life and I don't think it can be converted using two-year convert. The second thing that must be true is the device has to be running old two-year firmware. Tuya have recently been making changes to prevent anyone doing over-the-air updates. And so if your device has been already paired with your phone and it's done an update from the Tuya servers, it may have a version that is too new. If you've bought a device and you're intending to flash it to Tasmoda, do not pair it using the regular Tuya software. You want to make sure that it's got the old version of the firmware on it that hasn't been updated. The third thing that must be true is you have to be able to put the device into what's called easy mode. Now when you are pairing a two-year device with a phone and connecting it to your network, there are two different methods supported by the two-year firmware. One is called AP mode or access point. That is where the device broadcasts its own Wi-Fi network, you connect to it, configure it, and then it connects to your own network. That doesn't work with two-year convert. The other method is called easy config. In this what it does is act as a client sends out a broadcast and it searches for compatible networks. Typically what you need to do is press and hold the power button for five seconds or turn the power on, off, on, off, on, and then wait a few seconds. Whether it's possible to put your device into easy mode or what method you use to do it can vary depending on the manufacturer and what options they've chosen when they set up to you. So you can't always do it. But if any of those three things are not true, you probably can't use two-year convert. You'll have to use one of the methods I'm going to show in follow-up videos to this. But have you ever stopped to think about why it is the two-year try to actively prevent you from updating the firmware? Other systems like eWeLink, which is used on the Sonoff, and uh, Shelly devices, for example, have a programming header right on them. And uh, Sonoffs, in some models, have a DIY header that allow you to specifically to override the internal firmware. So those companies are obviously very hacker friendly, but why is Tuya going out of its way to stop you doing its conversions? Well, there are many reasons and none of them are in your favor. For example, they want access to the data on what's going on with all those devices. If you continue running their firmware, they can see every time every device has been turned on or off. They can see every sensor reading that's been taken they can build up a huge amount of operational data over time about what's happening with all of those devices. So if they stay on the two-year firmware, they continue to have access to that data. Another reason is that their customer, which is the appliance manufacturer, doesn't necessarily want to set up an app or have remote control on their devices for your benefit. It's actually a way of tying you to them as a vendor. They want you using an app with their branding in it, they want you interacting with their devices through a method they control. They don't just want to sell you a piece of hardware and then never have anything else to do with you. They want that ongoing interaction. So it, one of the reasons that appliance manufacturers do jump on the IoT bandwagon is they see it as a great way to increase the number of touch points with you as their customer. So it's not in their interest to allow you to take the device, put your own firmware on it, and take total control. That disconnects you from their ecosystem. To do an over-the-air conversion of a two-year device to run Tasmoda, we need to use software called Two-Year Convert. Two-Year Convert is maintained by Colin Quebler, 
and it is based on some very clever work by Michael Stigervold of VTrust. He discovered a flaw in the over-the-air update process used by Tuya and figured out a way to force it to load alternate firmware. To use Tuya Convert, all you need is something like a Raspberry Pi and an SD card. What I like to do is have an SD card set up just for this purpose so that whenever I need to do a conversion, I can just plug it into the Pi, turn it on, and all the software is set up ready to go. But you need to make sure that you're using a Pi that has Ethernet, so you can't use something like a Pi Zero. That's because we need a connection to Ethernet to get internet access and use the Wi-Fi on the Pi for the device to connect to. Start by installing the Raspberry Pi OS onto your SD card. The easiest way to do that is using the official Raspberry Pi installer. Go through the normal setup process, get it connected to your network, and then get yourself a shell on it. I won't explain all that detail here, it's pretty straightforward and there's great documentation on the Raspberry Pi site. Once you have Raspberry Pi OS running and you have a shell, we're ready to start installing all the Tuya Convert software. The first step is to type sudo raspy config to open the Raspberry Pi configuration. Go into localization options, WLAN country, and set your country. This will ensure that your Raspberry Pi is using the correct frequencies for your region. Reboot the Pi, and then log back in again. Just to make sure that git is installed, type sudo apt install git. It's probably there in a standard Raspberry Pi OS installation, but this just makes sure that you've got the tools you need. Then we can use git clone to pull down the latest version of the two you convert software. All these commands will be on the Superhouse site, so you can just copy and paste them. Now type cd tuya convert to go into the tuya convert directory, and then run the install prerequisite script. This downloads all the packages that it needs and begins the setup process. This takes about two or three minutes, so just let it run. Whoa, 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 hold your horses, slow it right down. It probably feels like I've just been throwing techno babble at you for the last 60 seconds, but it's not really that bad, and you don't have to do these steps ever again. What I've just shown you is really only four things. It's installing Git, downloading the software, going into the directory, and running the setup script. All the commands for that are on the Superhouse site, so you don't even have to type them in. Just copy and paste them. You'll be fine. Once you've done it, all you need to do is make sure you keep that SD card around. Don't use that Raspberry Pi, well, don't use the SD card for anything else. And then when you want to do to your convert again, you can just pop it into a Raspberry Pi and all the software is ready to go. So next, we need to actually run the conversion process. For that, we need one more thing. Something like a mobile phone or a tablet. Some Wi-Fi device that you can use to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Before doing the process for real, let's do a quick review of what's about to happen. You'll start with your Raspberry Pi connected to Ethernet and a shell so that you can run commands on it. The Raspberry Pi will then create its own Wi-Fi network called VTrust Flash. You then use your device like a mobile phone or a tablet and connect to that network. If your device warns you that there's no internet access and it wants to switch away, tell it to stay on the network. Then we'll put the two device into flashing mode it will connect to the Wi-Fi on your Raspberry Pi, and the Pi will pretend to be the update server from Tuya. It will say, hey, I've got a new firmware for you, you need to download it. But it's lying. It's not really providing Tuya firmware. It's going to provide either Tasmoda or Esperna, which will then be installed on the Tuya target device, and then we've got full control of it. And now we're ready to go. Begin in the Tuya convert directory, and run the start flash script. It will ask you to agree to a disclaimer, and then ask you about DNS mask and mosquito. Just say yes to everything. Then it will come to a screen with three steps. This is where you need to pause. Now you need to have your other device ready to go. So grab your smartphone or tablet and connect it to the VTrust Flash network. Use the password flash me if you can. <laughs> Let me know if you know what the reference is there. And then you can put it aside. But if your device says that it can't connect to the internet through that VTrust Flash network and it wants to change away back to your normal network, don't let it. Tell it to stay on that network. Next, you need to put your to your device into easy mode. If it's a device with a power button, typically you press and hold the button for five seconds and then the LED will start flashing. If it's a device like a light bulb and it doesn't have a power button on it, turn the power on, off, on, off, on, and then just wait a few seconds. Then it should be in easy mode, ready to connect to to your convert. So now back in the shell, press enter, and the process will begin. 
the Raspberry Pi will pretend to be the update server. And the very first thing it will do is grab a copy of the existing firmware that is on the target device. Then later you can use this to restore it if you really need to. Once it's grabbed a backup of the existing firmware, it will give you a couple of options. You can either return it to stock, flash a spurner, or flash Tasmoda, or you can just quit. In this case, I want to install Tasmoda, so I'm going to select option 2. And then say yes. Your 2U device will now download the Tasmoda firmware that has been provided by the Raspberry Pi, and it will be installed. That's it, your device is now running Tasmoda. One thing to keep in mind is that 2U Convert installs a minimal Tasmoda build. It probably doesn't have all the features for specialized functions on your device. So once you have it up and running, you can log into the web interface and do a firmware update. Then you can install whatever is the specific build of Tasmoda that you want to run on your device. You're also going to need to configure it to set up all the different features that it has. The easiest way to do that is to look up your device on the Blackadder Tasmoda template site. You can grab a template and install it into the Tasmoda configuration and then it'll all be set up properly. Start by copying the template from the Blackadder site and then go into the web interface for your device. Go into the configuration section and you'll see there are sections called configure other and configure template. Don't go into configure template, that's not what we need, that's for creating a new template. Instead go into configure other and then paste in the template that you just copied. Save your changes, the device will reboot and it will now be fully configured with all of the options set by the template. In this case the template has changed the title of the device and it has also enabled the power monitoring option. If your device isn't listed, you might have to do a bit of messing around to get the configuration right, but now you have total control over it and you can adjust it to do what you need it to do. If you've used 2 Convert and you found it useful, please consider going along to the website and donating a few dollars. Open source projects like this often fall on one or just a couple of people to do a lot of work that benefits a very large number of other people and their work often goes unrecognized, so a little financial contribution can be a good thing. Now, if 2 Convert didn't work for you for one of the three reasons I mentioned at the start of this video, you may need to use a different technique, like a direct serial connection or even replacing the module. I'm going to show you how to do both of those techniques in future videos. But in the meantime, go and build something awesome.